Yeah, if you've done the Blue White Kid a couple different ways here, roster wise and all that since you got what's your plan for this year? Yeah, I think for the, the most part we've done it, um, you know, the same way we'll do it this year, which is, you know, basically ones versus twos. Um, you know, the, the one, the, the first unit, you know, typically um, there's a little bit more guys on that unit because there's some guys that we know aren't going to play a lot of reps in the game. Um, but, but overall, ones, ones versus twos. I, you know, I, I would make the argument, I think this is where the mid-semester guys are so valuable because without them, you know, it, it, would, it would obviously change the way we could you know, run the game and the way we run spring practices. So um, you know, that number seems to continue to soar and grow. Um, but yeah, it'll, it'll be, you know, the blue squad will be primarily the ones um, and the white squad will be, com you know, primarily the twos and threes, guys that are competing to try to, to win jobs or win more significant roles. What do you hope to get out of that? Because obviously you guys go through spring, it's practice number 15, but do you have any specific objectives in mind for that? Or? No, it's, it's just another opportunity to go out and evaluate the guys. You know, you guys have heard me say before, a lot of times you go into the stadium and it's different. I'd like to get into the stadium more. <coughs> during spring ball. I'd like to get into the stadium more during camp. Um, with the weather this year, we weren't really able to do that as much as I would have liked. Um, but, you know, just going into the stadium for some guys, you know, I, you know, on Saturday, Micah Parsons comes up to me with, with wide eyes about being in the stadium. So I think, you know, getting in there and, and being able to do that is important. Um, you know, it, it's it's even amazing, you know, the, the slope of the field, just, just all those little subtle things that you wouldn't necessarily, um, you know, maybe think about, they factor in. Um, you know, the lights, the jumbotron, all those types of things. I like to get some night practices as well. But, you know, the spring game, it's, it's an opportunity for us to uh, go out and make some plays in the stadium, build on some things that we did during spring ball, gain some confidence, have some fun, and, and then really, you know, kind of put some closure to the end of spring practice. Where are you guys, James, heading into those last two, two sessions you have left? Could you tell us where you are kind of team-wise? And if you've gotten done what you want to get done so far? Yeah, I think we have one session plus the spring game, right. if I'm correct. I think so, that actually counts as one. But Yes, yes. Right. So uh, typically the, the, the last practice is more of a jog through. Um, you know, we go through and teach all the, the young guys how we go to the stadium, how we stretch at the stadium, how we are in the locker room. Um, you know, um, so it's basically a dress rehearsal as well as a walkthrough. So it's kind of a combination of our normal Friday in-season walkthrough plus a total um, game rehearsal so these guys kind of understand what to expect next season. So uh, not a whole lot we'll do on Friday. We'll, we will watch today's tape with them and get those things cleaned up over the next couple days. Um, we'll have you know, fairly vanilla game plans on both offense and defense. We'll, we'll go over those things. But I think the other thing, as you guys know, it's a, it's a great opportunity. You know, Brent was the defensive coordinator on the white team for a couple of years, and Ricky was the offensive coordinator on the white team for a couple of years. So it's also an opportunity to allow, you know, those other guys to, to call the game, uh, to manage the game, um, and, and get some experience. You know, it's, it's, it's very valuable for me to see how the, the defensive coordinator running the, the two offense with, on the white team, how he does against our one offense. And, and the same thing with our with our two uh, two offense, excuse me, our two defense against our offense. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Hey. Um, so that, that's there's value in that as well in terms of evaluating the staff. James, Along those lines, the integration of David and J1, how has that been and what new have they brought to the coaches room? But you know what happens is, is first of all they've been they've been great. Um, some of you guys know this, some of you guys may not. You know, I, I interviewed David seven years ago when I hired Josh Gaddis, so um, I've known David for a long time and been tracking him and building that relationship. Um, Jay Wan is a guy that I've, I've you know really just gotten to know here recently. But you know, early on, there's not a whole lot in terms of guys bringing their own ideas or perspectives. And don't get me wrong, we have conversations and they have input like everybody else. But, you know, right now they're trying to learn our systems. And then once they have our systems down pat, which they're, they're pretty far along with that, then that's when they bring the most value um, where they can bring their perspectives from Army or from Yukon or from West Virginia or from Florida. And that's happening now, but I think it becomes the most valuable once they know our systems and our culture, then they can add to it. Um, so they've been great so far. They've been great fits culturally, uh, their families as well. Uh, but I think we'll, we'll gain the most value with them, you know, after spring ball, after spring recruiting, you know, when, when we start to go through these things in more detail this summer and for training camp. You mentioned Micah earlier. Uh, you've been to a number of these Vikings by now. I'm just curious, 
you know, how much does this game mean to those early enrollees since this will be the first time they're, they're suiting up? It's not 110,000 maybe in the crowd, but I, mean, I got to think this still means a lot to them being able to play in front of their friends and family. Yeah, I think, I think it means a lot. It means a lot for us to be able to evaluate those guys and see if they are who we think they are, um, how close they are to being able to contribute. Um, and, you know, and, and for these guys, like you're saying, to be able to get up there and, and play in that stadium, which a lot of them have been seen a lot of games as, as fans or as recruits, uh, and for their families, you know, it's really pretty cool. You know, um, I know Micah, you know, I've seen his dad is, is rented a bus and they got a crew coming up from Harrisburg. I know, you know, Tar Burton will have a bunch of people here and, and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, I know it's exciting for those families. I know it's exciting for those kids, but for us, it's, it's another opportunity to kind of evaluate them and see how close they are and are they legitimately have a chance to contribute for us in the fall. Speaking of this Harper, the decision to move into the DN, when was that made, kind of the reasons going into that? You know, to be honest with you, that, that's how we recruited him. You know, the, literally the day we offered him, we offered him telling him, his mom, his dad, that we were offering him as a big athlete and um, you know, that we would give him a chance at linebacker, but he could be, end up being a defensive lineman for us as well. So that's where it started. Um, and then it progressed when he showed up and stepped on the scale. He was 263 pounds when he showed up here. So uh, it wasn't really me telling him that. That was genetics. Um, so um, he, then he, then he kind of went on this Nutrisystem diet or something, dropped a bunch of weight to kind of give himself a chance to stay at linebacker. And he really did some nice things. And I think he could play linebacker for us. But I think his greatest potential uh, here at Penn State and down the road is is at defensive end. So um, he's already done some nice things for us there. Um, but that's it was really from the beginning of recruiting him that that was a possibility. And his body would tell us who he was going to be. What do you think it'll take, um, obviously this summer, because it probably won't happen now, but what it'll take this summer to kind of get somebody to separate at that middle linebacker spot? What are you kind of looking for to evaluate that? Well, it's everything. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, physically are they able to do it? It's, it's mentally are they able to do it? And there's a lot of, uh, you know, the verbal aspect of that from a leadership standpoint, being able to have, understand the system well enough and understand what the offense is trying to do formationally to confidently bark out those calls. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's all those things. And, um, you know, right now, you know, I, I wouldn't say that, that we know what the answer is. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, I think we'll be confident by the time camp ends, but I don't think it'll even be the beginning of camp. I think we'll be, you know, we'll be pretty far into camp before we decide because I think we got a lot of inexperienced guys and some veteran guys that are battling, battling for that spot. So uh, for me, the pitcher hasn't cleaned up yet. I, feel that, I think Coach Pry kind of feels the same way. Um, but it's going to be, it's not like one thing. It's a combination of all those things. It's the physical fundamentals and skills and techniques of doing it. It's the mental understanding of what we're doing as well as what people are going to try to do against us and how does that change our calls. It's the leadership aspect. Um, it's all of it. You know, it's all of it. It's durability and it's trust. At the end of the day, it's trust. It's the coaches trusting you know, who they're going to be able to put out in that position, consistently be able to fill all those roles all the time or a large percentage of the time. James, last week after practice, you expressed kind of some unhappiness with how it went. How do you feel today when you know, the next session game will offer and then you have to Yeah, I thought, I thought today was good. You know, the, the hard part for me is I want us to play really competitively, and I want us to play with a lot of emotion. And the hard part is to teach a team how do you take that right to the edge without crossing the line um, as a competitor and emotionally. Um, and that's where I think we've done a pretty good job the last couple of years of balancing that, that we are going to compete so hard at practice that we're going to play with passion and emotion and have fun, but not ever cross the line. Um, and I thought today, I thought we got a lot of really good work in, we got a lot of situations covered, but I thought there was a few times where we became undisciplined. You know, at the end of the, you know, end of the practice there, we did a two minute situation. The defense picks the ball off, the game's over get down and we're returning it you know cutting back across the field making 50 guys miss exposing the football and then throwing the football up into the stands which I think we all saw that game a few years ago when they got a, a penalty like that then they kicked off and then they returned the kickoff you know um, I think it was Tennessee versus Georgia or something like that so um, just just there was just lapses of discipline today that that I wasn't really happy with but overall 
I thought it was a very, very good practice. But we just got to mature at a few spots. Um, so that doesn't happen. Uh, uh, following up on Audrey's question, who all is legitimately in that mix at, at Mike? How many guys are you going to be? Too many to list. I mean, to be honest with you, um, you know, we got guys that are playing Mike. We got guys that are playing the Will. You know, it's 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 too many to list right now because even the guys that we have listed at Mike linebacker, it's not like it's just those guys. Right. It's all those guys that we have at the inside linebacker position that legitimately could compete. The field backers are a completely different animal. But those two inside backers, it really could be any of the guys in you know the three deep really at this point. And what we got is we got some veteran guys that you know really done some nice things, and then we got some young guys that are really talented but lack experience and understanding of what it takes at this level. And that's redshirt freshmen as well as true freshmen. So um, it's a it's a long list of candidates. You you got any eligibility left? <laughs> you don't want me at middle. You don't want me out there on the field at all. Trust me. You mentioned kickoffs a minute ago. Your thoughts on the new kickoff proposal or rule, whatever? Yeah. Um, at this point. Before I, I speak, I, I, I want to make sure that I have studied it in detail and I've talked to the officials because the officials that we have work in practice, and I, I'm, not, I'm talking not specific to just the kickoff rule, but all the rule changes. When you ask the officials before they've actually had discussions and been clarified, you get six different answers. So before I stand up here and speak and tell you my feelings, I want to make sure that I clearly understand it. The, the one thing I will tell you is I'm a little concerned that we, we say we need to make these changes in the game to protect the game, which I'm 100% on board with, and a lot of it deals with concussions. But I just haven't seen the data that kickoffs, there's a higher percentage of concussions. There is data that says there's a higher percentage of injuries. But right now, the way I've seen the data, that's hamstrings and everything just thrown together. So I just, I get it. We got to make changes to protect the game. But I, I will also want to make sure um, that some of the changes that we're making are aligning based on what we're supposed to be doing. Um, you know, the, some of the cut block things that we're talking about right now, does that create now more head-on-head -head collisions when we're not cut blocking? I don't know. So I, I need to study it a little bit more and make sure I understand it completely uh, before I have any really strong opinions publicly. Um, but then after that, the rules have been changed. The rules are the rules. And I want to make sure our guys understand and our coaches understand in detail so that we can take advantage of it. Thank you. Thank you.